Hi, I'm Wendy Gardner and I'm at the Festival of Quilts at the NEC Birmingham in the UK. I'm going to show you a very easy method of making bias binding and binding the edges of a quilt or a table runner or anything like that. The first thing I've done is cut strips of fabric and in this case they're two and a half inches wide but I need to join more to make one long one. And to join them and keep the bias, I have got them right sides together at right angles. I've then drawn a line, for me, from top left to bottom right. And I'm going to sew along that line and then flip it open and I'll have one long strip. I can now flip that open to have one strip, cut off the excess and press, and then I'm ready to fold the binding in half to bind around the edge of my table runner. So I'll press the seam allowance open. I can just finger press that open. Fold it in half, and this time I'm folding it half with the wrong sides together. And that's now ready to be attached to the table runner. With true blue Peter fashion, here's one I've started earlier. So I've got it with the folded edge, right sides against the right side of the table runner, matching the edges on the edge there. And I'm going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance, but I'm going to use the edge of the presser foot as my guide because that makes it nice and easy. So to do that, I've actually moved my needle over. And to move your needle over, you use your stitch width button when you're working with a straight stitch. I haven't pinned it all the way round because I can work in sections. So I'm starting along one long edge. And then I just stitch. Now I'm going to stitch to the corner, stopping about a quarter of an inch from the edge again. And then I will stitch on the spot or back stitch if you haven't got a lock stitch on your machine. Take the work out. So I've taken it out of the machine and now I'm going to fold the bias binding at right angles to that seam and then down again, keeping my finger on that fold. I shall pin it in place. I'll do this without getting my fingers in your way. And as I turn it round, I'm going to flip up the fold because what I want to do is I want to start stitching where I finished stitching. So I finished just there. I'm going to start just here. To make that easier, I shall put a little dot of fade away or wash away pen, pop it under, line up my needle with my little dot. So that's keeping that fold out of the stitching, but I'm stitching right on that join where they've joined together. So I put the needle down, just raising that up to make sure it's loose. Deep, press the foot down and off I go again. And as I go, you can, if you want, pin all this round, but I tend to work in sections, so I don't need to. I'm getting to another corner again, just go so it's about a quarter of an inch. Reverse to lock the stitching. Take it out and yet again, Fold it at right angles, so I've got a diagonal fold. Fold it back along the new seam, keeping all the edges even. Put a pin in place. And then turning it round, I'm keeping that fold in place. Mark the, where I want to start stitching with a dot. I finish stitching just in there. I want to start the other side of that, little dot.
So I'm going to stop with the needle down. I didn't stop. When I started stitching, I left at least an inch, about 2.5 centimetres, unstitched. Having tucked in the short end, I'm now going to lay the overlap inside because I'm opening out that end where I hadn't stitched to the very beginning of it. Trim off the excess so that I can lay that excess overlap inside my unfolded start, fold it back over again and then continue stitching until I've started, got back to the start. Just lock the stitches in. So that's now ready to fold over and I will fold it over to the reverse of my table mat and actually I'm going to pin from the right side. This is when you have a choice. You can either stitch in the ditch from the right side, catching the stitching underneath, or you can turn it over and slip stitch by hand, or you can use a decorative stitch from the right side, which again catches the underside. But the corners, so I'm going to do the corners first. First thing is to trim off at an angle the corner to reduce the bulk. And then turning that corner through, you can either use your nail or you can use a point turner or a knitting needle so that you get that nice mitre. If I was using wider binding, I would then perhaps hand stitch the little mitre in place. So I turn it over. And again, I'm pinning from the right side. And then you can see that that corner is now mitred. And on the underside, again, you put the mitre in place and a little hand stitch just to stitch down the actual diagonal will keep it neatly in place. So we go around all the way around doing the same thing. Turn it to the wrong side. So I tend to work from the right side when I'm doing it. And by pinning in the seam, so sort of stitching in the ditch bit there, I can see whether I've actually attached the back nicely. Make sure you've got the mitre, a nice little corner. Flip it over and tuck the mitre in the other side as well. So you go all the way around doing that and then once you've done it, you have a choice. On this one, I've actually used a machine stitch I've used a sort of very matching thread, so it might be difficult to see. But it's like a blanket stitch, so it sort of stitches straight in the seam, then with a little stitch going off into the binding. And then on the other side, you can see it's caught down the underside at the same time. So that's one way of doing it and finishing very, very quickly if you like to do everything by machine. Alternatively, you can do, so I've, the same, I've done exactly the same technique on this, which I've made my own bindings, and then I stitched by hand on the underside. So there's your quilt, your table runner or your placemat, very quickly bound.